Tesla has a noisemaker now built into it. At least Model 3 does. Model S and X actually should be happening pretty soon if not already. But it's actually pretty darn loud. So that is actually kind of the background noise in drive and in reverse it's really loud. And in my opinion, super annoying. So we are gonna figure out how to disable that, mute it, until Elon actually comes out with the ability to change the noise, regulate how loud it is, how quiet it is, and all that. Cause that, it's not something I wanna live with. So the speaker grill is actually right under there, we'll show you in a minute, but here we have a decibel reader, and we've used this in a couple videos, but I wanna kinda of get a baseline, we're about, I don't know, maybe like five, six feet away, and this is probably about the distance somebody might be walking next to your car while you're driving in a parking lot or something. So I'm gonna be quiet for a second so we can get a baseline. About 45 decibels, so that's actually not too bad for ambient. Now David is gonna go ahead and put it into drive. So we're getting about 63, 64. Now he's gonna go in reverse. 67, whoo, that is pretty darn loud. So we'll go ahead and go to the other side of the car and uh, see what it is on that side. Keep in mind the speaker grill is on this side, not this side. And we'll be quiet here and get a baseline. So about 41. Now, David's gonna go ahead and put it into drive. About 58, holy crap. Now he's gonna put it into reverse. 60 something decibels, the low 60s. That's pretty loud. Okay, so in trying to find a cheap fix, I'm actually going to take some clear plastic tape and put it up under there and see if that kind of muffles it at all because it is really, really loud. But I do actually have a 100% way to disconnect it safely without throwing any errors and without hurting any of the connections because you don't want to leave them open, being that water and dirt and stuff like that can get up under there. So let's go ahead and try this first and see what our readings are. I went ahead and took just some regular packing tape, put that under the car. I did put tabs on the packing tape so it's easy to take off. And there's actually still a little dirt on the bottom. Now if I was gonna go ahead and do this as a more permanent solution, I would not put the tabs to help pull it off. I'd make sure I really clean that probably with some alcohol to make sure everything sticks properly. Okay, so here's an ambient reading. About 41. Now David's gonna go ahead and put it into drive. About 53, 54, much quieter. Now reverse. About 53 still. Wow, that really did muffle it. And then back to the driver's side, let's go ahead and get an ambient. About 39 and then driving. About 51 in reverse. About 54. So yeah, it definitely did muffle it. Could you tell anything in the car? Yeah, it seems quieter. Seems quieter, okay. So yeah, I could definitely tell a difference with this tape on. I'm sure duct tape would reduce it even more. Now let's go ahead and try going in through here or under or maybe through the wheel well. We'll find out the best way. That way we can disconnect the speaker altogether, put on some safety caps so we don't end up with water in the connectors or dirt or anything. Okay, so here is everything with the front contents taken out. Literally just put right there. But um, there's no way we can access everything down there. So uh, don't try this option. Okay, so I'm gonna resort to just taking off this front right tire. You don't really have to do this. If you actually turn your wheel far enough, you'd be just fine to be able to access it yourself probably. But for me to be able to show you everything, 
I'm gonna just take it off so I can actually show you guys what I'm doing in there so that you can do it yourself. So we're gonna use our reverse logic jack pad, put that in there, jack it up, take it off. Yeah. You can see the inside of the wheel well. What we're gonna wanna do is take off some of these little uh, pop type rivets. They just come off really easily like that. And then once those are popped, we can just kind of go in and take all these out. Okay, you totally don't need to remove all this. It's actually right there. You can easily access it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this whole liner so I can get some better shots for you guys. We'll deal with getting that back in later. But now we can show you a good look at that speaker, which is right there. So right there you can see the actual speaker unit itself. And then right there you can see the grill. So here's the parts that we're gonna need to actually hook up to the connectors to make sure we don't get any dirt, any water, any kind of grime in there. Because when you can actually change the settings on this, such as the sound it makes or the volume it is, I wanna be able to re-enable it. I just think right now it's a little, it's a little loud. I have coworkers that are like, hey, something's wrong with your car, it's making a weird noise. No, it's not. It's okay. Don't worry. Here are two of the main connectors that you're going to need, as well as some little like waterproof type plugs. So the easiest way to actually take this off is right here. There's a gray connector. You can kind of pull that back and just keep pulling and it'll pull right off. Just like so. And there's the connector and there is the little port. So this is the male plug, which is actually the same end fitting is that right there but we're gonna go ahead and put it in the female on the speaker so what we'll do if we'll get some focus on here so we'll take these little caps and kind of push them right in there one on either side so that we don't get any water that gets in there because we don't want to destroy this we want to be able to use the speaker eventually and what we can do is keep it oriented the same way with the gray part up and push it right in and you'll hear it snap, and then you can push in the gray part to lock it in. And now that's not gonna go anywhere, I'm yanking on it. And then for the male speaker wire, we actually have this female port right here. So same thing on the opposite end of where it plugs in, we're gonna put these little plugs in. Make sure it stays nice and watertight. So it does only go on one way, but it'll snap together with a pretty satisfying snap. Hopefully you heard that. We'll go ahead and lock that gray pin right there. Now that's locked, all waterproofed up with those little plugs. So we could go ahead and just leave this dangling here, but I don't want to hear this ever. So what we're going to do is just kind of take some electrical tape and tape it back to itself. A little extra electrical tape never hurt anything. Make sure everything's nice, snug, not going to get any rattles. Everything is still connected where it needs to be. And that's it. So we're good to go ahead and put it all back together and test it out and make sure that's not working. But being as though we disconnected it, shouldn't, and we'll just make sure we don't get any error codes. Are you in drive? You're now in drive. I don't hear you. Can you creep forward a little bit? Uh, I heard some leaves crunch. Just the leaves crackling. Yeah. Okay, now can you go reverse? We are sound free Tesla now. That's the way it used to be, yeah. I drive an EV for a reason. I don't drive an EV to make a ton of noise. If I wanted to make a ton of noise, I'd go buy some ridiculous supercar. So, I don't know. I think the noisemaker was too loud. Comment down below. Did you guys think it was too loud? Is this something you would be interested in doing? Are you going to re-enable it once Tesla allows us to kind of choose our own sounds or maybe adjust the volume level? Because I don't always need to fully announce where I am, especially like at work or whatever. I've had several coworkers actually say, hey, your car's making a loud noise. Is it supposed to? I've had several friends say that. It's just, I think it's too loud. Oh, David has something to say too. It's embarrassing. It's way too loud. It's louder than most gas cars now. I can hear you when you leave for work in the morning. I can hear you a hundred something feet away.
So are you happy that I took it oh, yeah, and disabled it? Oh yeah, it's back to the way it was. It would be nice if instead of having to disable it, that you could just enable it when you wanted to. That because would be nice. Because 99% of the time... But what does the, the time, government reg like regulation say? Right now, they have to add it for a certain number of cars this year, and then like starting in the future, they're going to have to enable it for all of them. But also, if they're going to require it, they should require it on all cars, not just EVs, because now there's some gas cars that are quieter than EVs with the sound maker on it. That's true, too. And this comes from the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's mandate as a result of the Pedestrian Safety Enhancement Act of 2010, which states electric vehicles must have an audible sound at speeds below 19 miles an hour to warn pedestrians of their presence. The implementation of the law was finalized in February of last year, and it gives EV makers until September 1st, 2020 to be fully compliant with the mandate's requirements. What do you think? Do you agree with these? But that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As always, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model S, X, or Model 3, much like this one, definitely check them out. I'll link to down below and using code Tesla inventory will get you 15% off your first purchase. All kinds of cool accessories. My two must haves are definitely gonna be a matte screen protector to knock off any glare from the sun, as well as make an easy to clean oleophobic surface, as well as a center console wrap because I'm not a huge fan of that gloss black scratch fingerprint prone material in the center console. So definitely check them out. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Go and click here to subscribe right where David's face is over here for more videos and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.